Hey everyone, welcome to Stratelli Studios. I'm Jeff Castanon. Welcome to another No Pause video reaction and analysis. We're back with another one for Classical Sunday. Thank you, Phil. He wanted me to check out the second installment of this 10 
man, you could just envision you out in space or watching. Like when I'm listening to this, I'm I am seeing space. I'm seeing like you know, got a spacesuit floating around. This is this is good. I'm wearing my my NASA shirt. Um, we'll talk about that more in a second. But um, it's uh, you know the ability of a composer to be able to um, write something that needs to go with the visuals is is amazing. And when it's done right, it, it's just. Um, gets to be where you don't even need the visual. I mean, you could just actually, like in your brain, you could uh, you could almost see it. Um, and this is why I admire about a lot of soundtrack work because I really, really love a, a good soundtrack. And um, it's, uh, you know, part for me why I love movies so much because it's the, uh, the marriage of the visual and the audio and the emotional and the acting and all of that. And that's why I love movies so much is that uh, it combines a lot of uh, different areas of art. And um, this is amazing. Boy, that solo violin in this is so good. Boy, it's so out front, that vibrato, then that, the glisses and all the little articulations, um, the stretching and pulling, you know, of the phrasing is just so beautiful in this. Um, I'd mentioned in the last video, uh, that I had visited the Los Angeles um, Museum of Science. And in one section, it was dedicated to space. And um, I showed some pictures uh, from, from my day yesterday. And um, there is a Mars lander that was kind of tucked in the back. And I stood there just staring at it thinking about you know how crazy it is that we thought up you know hey we can we can do this you know as humans we can do this we can go and and like we can make something that will like land on mars and we collect data and and bring it back and all all of that is this is absolutely mind-blowing and um i i was thinking about um my connection to 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 Mars and and space travel and this kind of thing where I um I don't know if all of you know this some of you probably do that I um uh write software for a living that's my main job and I work for a company that um makes CAD CAM software for machinists and some of our clientele involves uh, companies from uh, aerospace. So, you know, um, people that make parts for our spaceships and, and all those kind of things. So, um, it's always, uh, a lot of fun to find out what our software is being used for. So I just want to share a little something with you about that. I, um, when I first started out working for the company, I was, uh, very excited to, know that, you know, the, the small group of developers, you know, I, I call them my friends uh, who write software for this company. So we're very, our development team is very small, very specialized. So we all have our own uh, niche that we work in. And I, I do um, some toolpath related stuff, but uh, the thing I really love is is uh, involved in the interface and being an artist and all of that. That that's a really good fit for me. But um, I, I have I have done stuff related to uh, tool movement and stuff like that as well. But <laughs> when I first started with the company, I <laughs> I got really excited because like we always like to find out what our software is being used for. And I remember the day that somebody came in and said, uh, hey guys, uh, the company Purina is using our software. And I'm like, oh, what are they doing with it? Oh, they're making extrusion dies for, uh, you know, puppy chow and cat chow, you know, all the little shapes and stuff that they're, they're using the software to make uh, die cuts and 
molds and stuff for uh, for making the shapes. And I thought I was so tickled by that. I was like, oh man, that's something you could hang your hat on. That's so cool. So, you know, that was like a big pride moment for me. And then over the years, you know, I would hear about more things. And after that, it's like, uh, hey, Jeff, because, you know, everyone knows that I'm a musician at work. And, and they're like, hey, guess what? Uh, uh, our software is being used for. I'm like, yeah, OK, what? And they said, well, Ernie Ball bought, you know, some some seats and they're using it for making guitar designs and and parts and stuff like that. I'm like, Ernie Ball, are you kidding me? And I said, yeah, yeah. You know, and they showed me some parts that they had made with the software that I work on. And I was just like, oh, my God, this this can't get any better. Well, it did get better because um, we knew that uh, certain companies that deal with making stuff for the space industry, industry and we knew something was going on with these. We had a contract with them and it was very hush hush. We didn't even know that the developers didn't even know what was going on with it. But, but uh, eventually it went public that they uh, used our software to develop um, make the wheels components for uh, the Mars Ex Exploration Rover Spirit and Opportunity um, back in 2003. So I, I was stunned to find out that software that I work on was used to develop and design the wheels for a rover that actually went to Mars. So. <laughs> So that that was like, you know, it can't get any better than this. And then um, they ended up coming back. Uh, the company ended up coming back um, 2011 and, and made even more, designed even more parts for the rover Curiosity, which also went to Mars. So, so um, that's three times. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm putting up the information, as you see, Gibbs Cam enables rover exploration vehicle parts go to Mars for the third time. So um, you can't, I can't imagine um, being more proud and more gratified with contributing to something like this. And as I stood there in silence, staring at that, that lander that was on display at the museum yesterday, just thinking that I had something to do with helping in some way with this. And there are, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of people involved to make something like this successful. But the fact that, you know, I had something to do with um, helping something to, you know, do a job on Mars, um, it, it just doesn't get any better than that. And, um, uh, yeah, what a great, what a great feeling, what a, what a great um, surprise, uh, actually, that I didn't expect to see that that day. But it really, um, it really um, uh, made me think a lot about just how amazing that we are as humans to think of the impossible and to make it happen. I love that. <laughs> Go humans. <laughs> oh. Anyway, so this music is very impactful for me because I feel a connection, very strong connection with um, the music being related to space and being related to my experience. So, so thank you so much, Phil, for bringing me back in, into this world again, into thinking about this contribution. And uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that. And um, yeah, this isn't designed to be a, a humble brag at all because I have plenty of failures to keep me grounded. <laughs> so don't worry about that. All right. We'll come back for more cool stuff. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.